Welcome back, Authenticate fans. In this video, I'm going to be taking a close look at the latest version 1.2.2 of the Authenticate tuning app, written by Authenticate community member Ian Coleman. Like all Authenticate files, this is free, and I'd like to extend a huge thank you to Ian. He has certainly burned many hours on this endeavor. This new version has a ton of great features to support the continuing expansion and functionality of Authenticate flight controls, but if you're not familiar with why this tuning app came into existence, then this snippet of video from Simhanger's latest review of Authenticate gives a very good demonstration. I'll put a link to the full video in the description. Mark does a great job of showing us how the Authenticate mounting system allows controls to be positioned exactly where they should be, but he also highlights the problem with the default trim wheel and its lack of sync with the real aircraft. So, the original purpose of the tuning app was to get the two in sync. Now there's two different solutions to this, and in fact Ian thoroughly provided two options, or more like three actually. I should also add that this is a very common problem with trim wheels from any supplier, and this tuning app will work with any trim wheel that's based on an encoder rather than an analog access. I'll explain the simplest option first. If you look at the lower trim wheel, you'll see a marker hole, which is currently at three o'clock. And if you watch Mark spin the wheel, he needs to do about three full revolutions to raise the hole to the top. So it would take him 12 revolutions to do a full turn in the sim. So the button multiplier technique simply says that for each click received from the trim wheel, generate 12 clicks in a secondary virtual game controller called VJoy. So I can demonstrate that right now. Here's the tuning app. I've installed it along with VJoy as per the instructions. And by the way, if you've used an older version of the tuning app and had trouble with the .NET installer, don't worry about that. The tuning app now includes the .NET that's necessary. The link for all that will be in description. However, I'm not actually going to set this to 12 clicks, and that's for two reasons. One is that in the demo, 12 clicks will show us 12 flashes on the joystick controller, and you're not going to see that happen. I'm too fast. The second is that in practice, 12 clicks would be too much because Windows and the Sim tend to miss some of the clicks when you send them too fast. And in fact, if Mark had moved that wheel slower, arguably more realistically, it would not have required 12 rotations, probably more like six. So for the sake of this demonstration, I will set it to three clicks. So I go here and I create part one, which is the trim up. And I need to use remap to virtual button. Now, what's the trim up? I can use auto detect and I put my hand here and just there we go, it's button 12. I'm going to map that to VJoy button 1, and I'm going to have three pulses out for each click of the trim wheel. And you have to click Start, so that's the start done there. And in fact, let's demo that before I do the other half. So if we launch Games Controller, we can see there's Authenticate. And if I hit Properties, i just put that there. And if I trim up now, this is Authenticate, remember, so a small move should do just here a small flash or a couple of flashes. It is quite sensitive. And now if we do the VJoy device, again, let's bring that inside there. And if I try and do one single pulse, there we go, three flashes. That's what we're trying to show. So I'll just cancel that and close the app. The other side of this is that I need to make another mapping for trim down. So that is trim down. Again, it is button to virtual button. Detect trim down, that's this. Button 11, we'll make that map to button two, three, pulses and start. You've got to do start for each one. There's a separate start for each mapping, but there's also a settings up here, which is start all mappings on app start. So you can use that. But basically, you can, you can have this app auto start and, um, and auto activate the mappings. Now, just a quick word of warning that may save you a little frustration. When you set up this mapping in the VJoy game controller, it does not disable the Authenticate game controller. 
In fact, you've just seen that. Both of them were pulsing at the same time. So if you use auto detection to set up your SIM, you may find that the unmultiplied authenticate controller gets detected, not the one you want. So it's best to select them manually. The second caution is that if you use the button multiply method, you may not get the result you want because it depends whether the developer of the SIM aircraft accurately modeled the animation of the trim wheel with the degrees of trim applied in the flight model. In my experience, it varies a lot between aircraft and developers, and I'm sure it does between SIMs. So my preference is to configure the trim to match real world behavior, whatever is actually animated in the SIM. Whatever your preference, I'd invite you to share your own settings and experience, either in the comments below or in our Discord. This way, future versions of the tuning app can come with presets to save others the trouble of working it out. Okay, so now you can see how the Authenticate tuning app works in support of Authenticate controls. I'm going to take you through the rest of the features in version 1.2.2 now, and we'll start with the mapping features. So we've got our remap button to virtual button active. I'm going to turn that off, and in fact, I'm going to get rid of both of these mappings because we're going to use remap button to virtual axis now. Now this is an alternative to the technique I just showed and it should be a superior solution. If you work out exactly how many revolutions should occur between full trim up and full trim down, then you can map the trim wheel to an axis in VJoy and tweak the sensitivity of your trim wheel to behave like the real thing. It isn't true analog of course, but each revolution of the wheel generates 24 clicks, so you should be able to move the wheel in 15 degree steps, which is a pretty fine amount. For example, the Spitfire Mark 9 had 720 degrees, or two full rotations, between full trim up and full trim down. And I believe that a setting on the slider of about 115 should get this right in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let me just show you that. So what we would do here, we would just call this elevator trim, and we would use remap button to virtual axis, and we can again auto detect that this is the up, and that's time we can also do the down at the same time. We can map that. I tend to use RX rotation, and 115 is the figure I said, and then let's hit start. So now let's go back to the joy.cpl and have a look at vjoy and look at properties. And now let's see what happens when we trim forward. We can see that we are trimming down, and as we trim up, the X rotation is going up. So that is the axis option. Now the next option is remap encoder to virtual axis, and this in fact is an even more precise solution to our trim wheel problem. When Ian was developing this software, he discovered that underlying the 24 clicks per revolution, which the encoder generated, there were actually 48 state changes, and that if he used these as input, he would not only get more precision, it's now seven and a half degree steps instead of 15 degree steps, but also more accuracy in each step. In fact, he found that he could read the trim wheel data precisely enough to do away with that fuzzy sensitivity setting, and you could choose exactly how many revolutions of your trim wheel were needed to go from full lock up to full lock down. So, let's do this now. We will get rid of that mapping. We'll make a new one, and this is the advanced LF trim, and we're going to use encoder to virtual axis, and we will detect that the... Now, I've got a feeling it doesn't... Yeah, it's quite happy uh, auto-detecting whichever you turn on those. That's what I found before. Basically, you've got the same two inputs, and we will choose a virtual output of Rx. But now you can see that the configuration is different. So 24, leave that as is, because that is a standard. That, those are the encoders that come with Authenticate trim wheels. It might be different on other trim wheels. And we know that 720 degrees is full max, full lock, between full up and full down, which is two full turns, which means that two full turns should generate zero to 100%. So let's just put down there. So just to be clear again, in two full turns of the trim wheel, so that's this going all the way around twice, 
we would go from zero to 100% and then two back again would take us from 100% back to zero. So let's hit start on that. Now, if you do go for this option, there's one more thing you need to do, which is you'll need to undo a configuration setting that you made when you set up your trim wheel. You need to tell the Leo Bodner board not to treat buttons 11 and 12 as an encoder. So let me just open the encoders software, put that in there. You can see here, this is how things are normally set up and you would have done this if, if you already had your trim wheel working. We need to tell it not to use 11 and 12 as an encoder, but to turn off that encoder behavior. This enables Ian's app to read the raw data. Can I say thank you again, Ian? You are an absolute <laughs> genius for working this one out. Please guys, this guy needs to be bought a drink. Um, and there's a link in the description if you want to do that. So that's done, let's test it. I will now launch the joy.cpl again. I'll go to vjoy and I'll hit properties and we'll put that in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this all the way up to 100%. And I'll just keep on going until it's definitely there. And then we've got our wheel at the top, haven't we? We've got our, our little hole at the top telling us top dead center, that's where we are. So I'm now going to rotate two full turns back again. Okay, that's almost one. Now we're on one. That's looking good, we're about halfway down. And then again, keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. And there it is. Voila, two turns and we are at zero. Now the next option is remap axis to virtual axis. Now this is one of the functions that's got more to do with swapping controls. Say I'm flying the spit and using my Spitfire throttle. The sim is all set up for it. You'll find that certain axes have been set to reverse in Microsoft Flight Simulator for it to behave correctly. Then perhaps I want to fly the P40B or the Texan or perhaps even the Chipmunk. So I might want to swap for this throttle. I then discover that due to the requirements of design, the reverse states are all different. So rather than having a separate SIM setting, I can set a mapping up here. Let me show you this now. So if I stop that, um, I add a mapping, which is just the throttle, and it's a remap axis to virtual axis, and the input axis is going to be, I think it's X rotation is the throttle, and the output axis will be Let's call that L axis X. I can now reverse the throttle behavior. Zero to 100 becomes 100 to zero by doing that. Now you might be thinking that it's just as easy to have two configurations in your SIM, but not with this latest feature of Ian's. Because the other problem with switching controls is that the calibration changes. So you can see here that the tuning app has read from the registry that the minimum value for the throttle is 1164 and the maximum value is 2758. But if I was to switch it for this throttle, the minimum value would be different and the maximum value would be different. In fact, any particular build of this throttle, just through the variability of the, of the assembly, is likely to have slightly different values. But what we can now do with the latest version of the tuning app is with the settings save and load axis calibrations, Whenever you load in a configuration for a particular throttle or, or flight control setup, you can load in and overwrite the registry with the correct values so that you immediately get the correct calibration. This is a huge time saver. And now the final brand new feature, which I think has huge potential as Authenticate grows. This is Remap Axis to Virtual Button. And I'll explain a simple use for it. Let's say that you use your Spitfire throttle in Microsoft Flight Simulator and all works great. Then you switch to another SIM, and the SIM does not expect the mixture to be an axis. So here's our mixture lever, and it's an analog 0 to 100% in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But in the other SIM, it only has two states, say full rich or lean idle, i.e. cutoff. And I believe until about a year ago, this was actually the case in DCS. Well, with this new mapping, you can handle that. Okay, so we're gonna add a mapping, which will be called mixture. And we're going to trigger, it's, uh, we're going to use remap axis to virtual button. Uh, the input axis is X for mixture. Um, and it's going to trigger button one. 
in B joy as we go up through a gateway going forward on mixture, so going to full rich. And when we bring it back again, down to uh, lean or idle, that's going to trigger button two. Now we can choose at what point it clicks in. It could be that it doesn't click in until you're at sort of 90% of the way there. But I think a, a good sort of strategy here is halfway, so the halfway mark. So we need to activate the first gateway and put 50%. So what that means, so as I travel past the 50% mark, that generates the click on button one. And then as I come back again on the 50% mark, that generates the click on button two. So let's test it. So I hit start on that calibration and I go to joy.cpl and I go to the vjoy device properties. Let's bring that in here. Here we go. So we're looking at button one and button two. So I bring it forward, bring it forward and we pass the halfway. That's button one. And then we pass the halfway on the way back and that's button two. Fantastic. Now let's say there were four states. I say you had idle, auto lean, auto rich, and full rich. There would then be three transitions. Let me just show you how you do that. You would say, let's stop it. You would say that we need a transition. Um, now it's three transitions, so the, the, the place for them would be 25%, and then 50%, and then 75%. So let's just start that and test that. Put the panel in place, and if I go up 25%, that's a transition. At 50, there's a transition. 75, there's a transition. So I'm now at position four, and then three, and then two, and then one. So those are the four states that you can manage. And if you're designing a throttle uh, that had that functionality, I expect you would put a detent at each of the four states, and then the pulses would happen as you move between each of the detents. Okay, so now you know how to set up these mappings. The only thing to mention still is how to save and load when you swap between aircraft. It uses XML files, and when I've created a configuration, I can save an XML, say for a Spitfire, or I can save it for the P-40B, or for the Mosquito, or, or whatever other aircraft. Now, one thing to check before I do this, because as well as saving the mappings, I want to save the calibrations. So I need to switch on save and load axis calibrations. And it says here, would you like to do that? Yes. And I should see now a green blob. Okay. Now a quick way, rather than setting all those mappings up, is I can use a preset because it comes loaded with some presets. The tuning app gives you some presets. So straight off, there's a Spitfire preset. And it's got that 115 figure I said for button to virtual axis. It's got throttle mixture and RPM in there. Um, there's no output flipping or any of that um, in here because actually the reason they're in is purely so that we have an entry for each one and then we're able to save the calibrations because that's the bit I, I actually care about most right now. So let's get those calibrations bang on, shall we, before I save my version of the Spitfire throttle mappings. So I'm going to run joy.cpl, I'm going to hit properties, I'm going to hit settings, calibrate, and run the wizard. Next, I'm going to show raw data because those here you can see those numbers that are in the tuning app. And that z-axis is the throttle. So there we go. You can see those numbers move between max and min. Next is the mixture. See the range there. And finally the prop. See the range there. Done. Next, finish. Apply. OK. OK. So now these throttle mixture and RPM values should be updated. And now I can save as, and I'll overwrite, I was testing this earlier, spit.xml, save that, and yes, I want to replace it. And those are my calibration and mappings for my Spitfire throttle for this particular one that I've built. Now let's do the P40B. Now one thing to do, I'm going to disconnect the Spitfire throttle, but what you should do to get the best results um, is also disconnect the USB, because the Leo Bodner board doesn't like it so much. So the best order is you get the network sockets plugged in, 
and that means your axes are connected to the board and the board, then plug in the USB. Okay, right, let's make a new configuration and mappings for P40B. So there's a preset for this as well. We'll take that. Um, there's not a lot of difference really, um, but importantly, again, we've got throttle mixture prop. I'm going to run a fresh calibration for that. So joy.cpl. Okay, authenticate properties and settings, calibrate, run the wizard. Next, I'll show the raw data again. So now the throttle, there we go. And then the mixture and the prop. Okay, finish, apply, done, done. And now if I, let's just check, yeah, I've got save and load access, so file save as, and again, I had a P40B that I did earlier. Let's overwrite that and say, yes, I will save that. And now you can quickly see actually the difference, because if I have throttle axis selected, um, and you can see the, the minimum is 1450, the max is 3001. If I now load the um, Spitfire one, so what are we on again? 1450, 3001, let's load that. And 1757, 2817. Go back again, P40B on the throttle, 1450, 3001. And what will happen, in fact, is when you exit the app, the most recently active configuration is the one that will auto load. So if you're flying the Spitfire a lot, um, it will, that will be the last you used and that will be the one that gets used again. Um, you can also, I should just point out, you can see here that it shows you what's active. So there's the P40B. And if I load the um, Spitfire one, it says here that's the Spit one. So that, that gives you an indication as to which you've got in place. Okay, well, that's all I have time for now, folks. Now, one of the reasons this upgrade came out is that we need it for the VF109 throttle with its four pump states. So I hope to bring that out in a video very soon. In the meantime, stay tuned, make sure you are subscribed, and I'll be back as soon as I can with more Authenticate.